Hi, it's me, Hannah, and today I want to talk to you about this poor guy in Washington who was discovered dead after displaying symptoms of muscle weakness and paralysis in his home that happened to be filled with over 170 jars of home canned food. But how does something like this happen? Turns out the cause of death was food poisoning and as a result of the consumption of his homemade canned food. Today, I will first discuss what type of organisms would be responsible for this type of foodborne illness. And then second, I'll describe the conditions that cause that organism to grow inside the can. And third, I will explain whether or not the organism would be capable of growing outside of the can, as well as point out the ways other types of organisms are classified based on their oxygen requirements. Now, on to the first question. Foodborne illnesses associated with improper canning that can result in a situation like this often involve anaerobic bacteria. Unless aseptic techniques are used, these bacteria can multiply in conditions favorable to their growth. Unfortunately, since the practice of home canning is still used around the world, those bacteria, like any bacteria, are opportunistic and will multiply if not killed before the lids are sealed on the cans or mason jars. Therefore, to answer the next question, the bacteria that was growing in the dead man's can jars housed the perfect conditions for the organism. These conditions could range from anywhere from a suitable food source, suitable pH and temperature range, but most importantly, the absence of oxygen, no oxygen. Certain types of food are more prone to be associated with this type of food poisoning, like canned fish, such as sardines. Once the can is sealed, the surviving bacteria, or endospores, can actually logarithmically multiply. Since the cans are usually stored at room temperature, this is another factor which promotes ideal growth conditions. So going on to the last question, even after these anaerobes die, their harmful or even fatal exotoxins remain behind. Even rinsing off the can will not really impact the lethal effects of the toxins inside of that can. Therefore, they are not likely to grow outside of the can. An obligate anaerobe outside of the can cannot really survive when directly exposed to that atmospheric oxygen for long. Most likely, the other organisms that would be able to survive on the outside of the can would be all about that oxygen, but not those neurotoxin-producing menaces. <laughs> Washing food will reduce the number of obligate aerobes, which require oxygen, along with facultative anaerobes, which do not require oxygen, but prefer it. And then we have aerotolerant anaerobes, which could survive on the outside of the can. Um, they do not require oxygen, but they are able to destroy its harmful effects. And finally, we have microaerophiles, which also prefer a lower concentration of oxygen, similar to aerotolerant anaerobes, yet they differ in that they can only partially detoxify oxygen since they are aerobically respiring organisms. And um, that wraps up my answer for this week's topic. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy your weekend. Bye.